Honor is seeing the value that God has placed on someone. And honor is a heart posture displayed in action. You can't fake honor. You can't fake it. You can fake being nice. You do it every day. You do. You can fake caring about someone. You can fake respect. You can fake chivalry. But honor emerges when there is no perceived benefit to me. And it is a heart posture. Honor is something that happens within the soil of my heart, and then it blooms into action. We're focusing on honor. Whenever you start to talk about honoring all, the question that I, I feel that people don't ask what they want to ask is, who deserves honor from me and why? And, and the, the challenging thing is that's the wrong question to ask. But we like that because we want people to earn our respect. We want people to earn, we don't say that, but we behave in kind. We want people to earn our love. We want people to earn our grace. Our grace. We want people to earn our affirmation. You know, I found that in most marriages, there are two different types of people, one that craves affirmation and one that sucks at giving it. Is that true or what? <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and the one that craves affirmation, usually they're really good at affirming you or other people, but sometimes they affirm so much that it's a little vague and watered down. Like, you're the best. Like, my daughter Avery is the greatest affirmer in the world. It would, you could get up here and do a solo that American Idol would reject, and she would be like, way to go. Way to go. You are awesome. And you're like, nah, you, they weren't awesome. So sometimes people who are great at affirmation get a little vague, and those of you that suck at affirmation, I feel like sometimes you, you think because you thought affirmation, you actually affirm someone. <laughs> that is the truth. If you're the spouse who needs affirmation, raise your hand right now. Okay, look at their spouse and judge them hard. No, I'm kidding. Listen, listen, listen. And then sometimes if you're the one who, who's not great at bringing affirmation, you're about to, and then they do something that makes you mad, and you're like, no. Or like your husband finally takes out the trash, and you're like, he's like, did you see what I did? And you're like, you're supposed to take out the trash. I will not affirm you for tea. <laughs> Am I preaching today or what? Right. So we like want people to earn our love. We want people to earn our grace. We want people to earn our affirmation, but that's not what the scripture says. And it's definitely not what the scripture says when it comes to honor. Romans 12 says this, love one another in brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Notice it doesn't say outdo the person who you really want to outdo with showing honor, just one another. Philippians 2 says, this is Paul. Hey, would you make my joy complete? In other words, Paul is like a mom, like please, for the love of God. That's what Paul, that's what that, I mean, that's a, that, that's a loose paraphrase of what I think he meant. He's just like, please, God, just make my joy complete. And he's talking to Christians, by the way. Make my joy complete, being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others, not a few people, not the people you think deserve it, others. Can I just like a little sidetrack here? As, as a follower of Jesus, I want to boil down like your mission in life to just three simple statements. Number one, your main objective is to worship God. If you ever come to a church service and you say, I didn't like the worship who cares? It's not for you. I don't really like that song. It doesn't matter. That song wasn't for you. It was for God. And that's so silly that sometimes, like, oh, I didn't like that worship song. Why are they raising their hands? And why is there a smoke machine? Well, I don't know if God cares about the smoke machine, but I do. So, <laughs> so your number one objective is to worship God. Number two, your number two objective is to grow in discipleship and make disciples. And number three is to reach the people who don't know Jesus yet. There's, there's your meaning in life. I just boiled it down to three concise statements. So when we're following Jesus, our responsibility is first to the body of Christ. 
that I outdo you in showing honor to you. And then second, it's not just limited to Christians, anybody who's not in this room yet. Just so you were wondering what the word others in the original Greek, it means everybody. Turn to your neighbor and say everybody. everybody. Notice scripture doesn't say only honor the lovely or only honor the admirable or only honor the worthy. The scripture says we value and honor others. So who do we honor? It's a great question. Will we honor up? Out and all around. Everybody say up, up. Out, out, all around. All around. Say up, up. Out, out, all around. One more time. Up, up. Out, out, all around. Don't get ahead of me. Listen, this is really easy. Holy smokes, okay? No gold star for this one. <laughs> Can I just tell you, you, you need somebody in your life who is authoritative in your life that you honor. Look at me in the eyes for a moment. I am not talking a boss. That is reciprocal. You can respect the boss because he gives you a paycheck, but you don't have to honor him. I'm preaching today. But you need someone in your life who is authoritative, who can say, hey, stop behaving that way, and you actually listen to them. Now, we think we outgrow that once we're, we kind of hit adulthood, but no, that's a dangerous place to be. We want people in authority. The only reason there's any monicum of success in my life and Megan's life is because we have authority in our lives. We have three people who pastor us and lead this church, and Megan has all of their numbers and can, in a second, text Pastor Kevin Goff, you need to call Kerry. He's being a knucklehead. And in three seconds, Pastor Kevin Goff, hey, man, how you doing? What's going on in your world? And I can fake it. And he'd be like, oh, well, actually, the real reason I'm calling is because Megan called me. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Are you tracking with me? If you don't have that in your life, then you are playing with fire. But if we only honor up, then we are actually just slowly becoming a suck up. Oh, that was a good wow. That felt good. <laughs> It felt really good. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Mufasa. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Not only that, but I need someone whom I'm cheerleading and challenging, so I can't just honor up. I need a peer group who I cheerlead and I challenge, and it's reciprocal. In other words, I, I, I'm cheerleading and challenging, and they're cheerleading and challenging. I need that in my life. I need authority, but I need some bros who I can play golf with and laugh with, and they love me, and they're unimpressed with me. But if I only honor out, then I'm just building a clique. So I need authority. I need peers, but I also need to honor those that I am leading. Just because we're older than someone, we have more wisdom than someone, doesn't mean we don't honor them. But if I only honor down, then I'm actually rallying people to my cause, and I'm being manipulative. So we honor up, out, and all around, which begs the question, well, what is honor? And I'm so glad that you asked. Honor is seeing the value that God places on someone. By the way, my notes are in our app. You can follow along. There's fill in the blank for those of you that love that stuff and all the verses and sometimes other notes that aren't going to make it into the sermon. But honor is seeing the value that God places in someone. Now this, I've told this story before, is a snow globe. Anybody have any of these? Yeah. And you look at this, it says Texas, the Lone Star State. And I know for a fact this was purchased at a little convenience store in an airport at DFW. <laughs> where you go, you're like, oh, shoot, I got to get a gift for my kids. Uh, a stuffed animal and uh, hopefully not a shot glass, but I'm going to get like a snow globe. And I, I don't know why that's a thing, by the way. But this is of extreme value to me. I'm from Texas, but that's not why it's of extreme value. You've probably heard the story before. Back in Arizona, when I was on staff at a church there, my pastors, who also were from Texas, went on a trip to Texas, and as a joke, they brought me back a Texas snow globe. And I laughed so hard, and I put it on the shelf in my office. It was just a joke. I, I don't like snow globes. I don't need snow globes. But I laughed about it. Well, people would come to my office. I was the associate pastor there, and one day, a lady named Star Gregory came in, and she goes, hey... 
I noticed you love snow globes, and we were in New York, so I got you this snow globe and had like King Kong on the Empire State Building. I was like, thank you. I can't wait to put it right here on this place of honor in my office. And literally like three weeks later, Kim Green came in like, hey, I noticed that you love snow globes. And I'm like, oh God, this is not going where I want it. I don't even, she went like that Wichita, Kansas or something. And I was like, thank you. Let me place this snow globe in a very valued place of honor. Well, about two months later, our office was broken into. <clears throat> and those jokers stole a couple of computers. And then I don't know, most of y'all won't know what this is, but there used to be this book that you would open up and there would be CDs, compact discs. <laughs> Do you remember that? And you'd flip through. Remember when you're driving, and you think you drive with a cell phone's dangerous, you're like flipping through, like trying to <laughs> put the CD in the proper, like just to listen to some Blink-182. Anyways, that's not important. They, jo- they stole a couple books of CDs and you know what else they stole? my stinking snow globes, and I was ticked, and I was angry about it, and I preached about it, and you know what happened? (laughs) Star Gregory and Al Gregory went on a honeymoon, our anniversary trip to the Big Apple, and they brought me back a New York snow globe. told the story before, Ryan and Jessica Shino went to Dubai, and they thought of me, and they bought me a snow globe. My friends, Garrett and Jazz Denham, went to Italy on their honeymoon, and they brought me a snow globe. (laughs) Sandra West went to Greece, and she brought me a snow globe. Some random friend went to North Carolina (laughs) and bought me a Tar Heel snow globe. Do I care about the Tar Heels? No. But this is valuable to me because people thought of me when they were on a vacation. I have 56 snow globes from all over (laughs) the world. I collect them. I've never purchased one, (laughs) and I only want them if you're on a trip and you think of me, but it has a very prized place in my heart. Are you tracking with me? My point is this. You don't get to determine the value of this snow globe. I do. It might just say Texas on it, and it has nothing to do with a tattoo on my arm or my heritage, but I've given it value. And it's the same thing that God has done with every single one of you. He has given you a value that doesn't matter what other people see in you. He's given you a value that it doesn't matter what anyone else has ever said about you. He's given you a value that doesn't matter how many times you've been betrayed or rejected. God chose you. So when I honor someone, I honor them because of the value that God places on them, not based upon the value that I see in them. The most powerful scripture that's compelling for this is Romans 5, 6 through 8. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one would scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good, for a good person one would dare to even die, but God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for me. He established your value. He established your value. I want to do a side note here, again, for one moment. This is why, as followers of Christ, we are pro-life. The Word of God says in multiple occasions... Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before something even biologically transpired, I chose you. And we believe that life begins at conception. 
and that life is sacred. I want to take a moment and stand firm on the truth of God's word that is unwavering. Are you with me today? So as we run into an election season, remember your values as a Christian are not based upon what you want or what you feel, but what the word of God says, and that should inform the way that you vote. Shall we dive back into the message today? (laughs) Honor is seeing the value that God has placed on someone, and honor is a heart posture displayed in action. You can't fake honor. You can't fake it. You can fake being nice. You do it every day. You do. You walk into Starbucks, you're like, oh, hey, good morning. How are you? You don't care what their answer is. You're just on your, (laughs) come on. You're just on your way to get your coffee. You with me? You know how to put on being nice. You can fake caring about someone. You can fake respect. You can fake chivalry. But honor emerges when there is no perceived benefit to me. And it is a heart posture. Honor is something that happens within the soil of my heart, and then it blooms into action. It means that there might be times when in relationships, I have to push past my current frustration in order to show honor to you because you are acting like an idiot, but even as an idiot, God loves you. Nobody else? It might mean that I've got to push past a current pain point. Maybe something that you said to me or the way that you treated me made me feel or caused me to feel insignificant or insufficient, but I have to choose to push past my pain point and choose forgiveness, which is honoring you because God values you. So honor is a heart posture. It is, it is not first found in action. It is first found in your heart posture towards people. It means that you might have to push past your definition of justice, thinking that somebody doesn't deserve honor, but because God still valued, while they were yet sinners, Christ died for them. So even though what they did was an atro- atrocity to me, I will push past that because I see the value in you that God does. Are y'all tracking with me? Which begs the question, How do I show honor? I'm so glad that you asked. How do I show honor? Well, there's three different ways I want to talk about, but first and foremost is reverence or high esteem. Here's a question to ask yourself. If Noah Kahn or Tom Brady or your presidential candidate walked in the room right now how would you respond? I didn't say Taylor Swift because we would divide the room very quickly. <laughs> if you don't know who Noah Khan is, that's not for you. It's for somebody else. If they walked in the room right now, in other words, somebody that has fame and acclaim that you respect, if they walked in the room, how would you respond to that? If there was a forced interaction, how would you treat the person that walked in the room? I think we're really good at showing a value and reverence and high esteem to people that have notoriety and acclaim, but the problem is the people who are closest to us don't get the best from us. There's an old statement that goes like this, familiarity breeds contempt, which means that the closer I get to someone, the more flaws that I see, the more imperfections that I see, and contempt is another word for losing respect. So I get closer to you, I don't esteem you highly, I don't have reverence towards you, and you often get my sloppy leftovers. And think about that. If your presidential candidate, don't say the names, I I honestly don't care, walked in, somebody that you go, this is the best, outside of Jesus, this is the best of two evils, I'm choosing this, but they walked in the room would, how would you treat them? And then ask yourself this, does your spouse get the same esteem from you? Do your kids get that from you? Well, that's silly. They're not the goat, Tom Brady. He's been to 11 Super Bowls. No, no, that statement is silly. You, you probably only, if you have kids, there, there's some families in here who have a lot of kids, but not, not everybody does. You, there's a limited amount. 
as it stands right now, I've got two girls, and that's probably all the kids that I'm going to have. If Megan gets pregnant, she's not going to be happy with me. You just heard that. Yeah, y'all pray for your boy if that happens. Imagine if I go through my life and I don't show them the honor and the reverence and the high esteem that I would show a celebrity. Don't they deserve that? You know what else that does? It sets a standard for them for every other knucklehead that wants to try to date them. The people closest to you deserve that. Reverence and high esteem. Another way to show honor is through the heart of a servant. It's this idea of how can I help you accomplish God's calling on your life. Philippians 2 that we read earlier says, rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Like just imagine what would transpire in your relationships if you just made your primary goal to serve them because of the value that God has given them. Oh, man. It's almost unfathomable because we would think, well, I'm going to serve so that you change your behavior, <laughs> but that's not honor. Are you tracking with me? It's showing reverence and high esteem. It's the heart of a servant, but it's also extending grace and patience. That's the thing. When you get close enough to people, you see the flaws you see the dirt. And you know what? As humanity, we're just not really good at seeing other people's dirt. We're like, I don't know what to do. Sometimes it's because it reminds us of our own imperfection. And sometimes because I don't know what to do. What am I supposed to say? It's like, I don't know if y'all remember when we went from analog television to high-definition television, and you could see, like, the pores in the skin of the news anchors, like, whoa, oh, my God. It's like Benjamin Button up in here. What's happening? And it was because the picture got so much clearer. And grace for people is needed when they make mistakes. Every one of you has strengths. And every one of your strengths has a shadow side. Like one of my strengths is, I, is courage. And I, I'm not going to get scared of you or things. I don't mind having tough com I don't mind having tough conversations, and I can do it with grace, but I'm also just a little bit intense, or so weak people around me say. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just a little intense. My daughter laughed a little too hard. Don't let her back up on stage in second service. That'd be great. So when you get around me and you see the shadow side of my strengths, I need grace from you and vice versa. And the challenge is that usually when I'm unable to extend grace, I've placed my value above yours, insinuating that I, you no longer deserve grace, but I do. <laughs> like, I can't extend grace to you anymore because you have hit your limit of God's grace, but I still am a recipient of it. Are you tracking with me? Patience. You know when you need patience? When you don't want patience. Also, by the way, never pray for patience. Bad, dumb idea. Yeah, yeah. It's when you don't, you... Nobody like, is like, I have so much patience today. <laughs> no, it's because your patience hasn't been tested today, <laughs> right? And uh, when I'm running thin on patience, it usually lets me know that I've allowed external impact, pressure to impact my interaction. Or here's a bigger one I found for me, maybe not for you. I forget how long my personal growth has taken. So I'm running thin on patience towards you because I have an expectation that you can mature and grow faster than you are. And I forget just how long it takes me. Are you tracking? 
when I flip the script on that, I start to see and understand the value that you have. And I go, oh, wait, I need patience. Aren't you grateful that the word of God says that God is not slow with some kind of slowness, but he is patient, not willing that any should perish. He's patient towards me. When I remind myself of that, it's just a little bit more doable to be patient towards you. Amen? You know, last point, and then we're going to close out and get you out of here on time, and we'll party. I'm giving away snow globes to everyone. No, I'm not. That's a joke. <laughs> Don't forget about me when you're traveling. I want a snow globe from you. Honor has a reward. Honor has a reward. One of the rewards is the favor of God. Anytime you or I as a child of God show honor to another child of God, it honors God. And there's favor on that. When you extend grace to someone who you've, you're really frustrated with, God honors that. He honors that. But not only that, honor creates an open heart from other people. And I just wonder how many of you might be stuck in a rut in your marriage because you're waiting for your spouse to change and it's time to bring some honor back. You're frustrated with the way your child or teenage son or daughter are behaving and, and, and it's time to bring some honor back. When I honor my wife and I honor my kids, their heart opens up to me. They get the best of me and in kind, I get the best from them. Honor has a reward. But we can't do it for the sake of the reward because then it's not honor. Because honor is a heart posture towards you because I see the value God has placed in you. Can we be a people of honor? Tomorrow when you go to work and that one chick that drives you crazy is there, or that one dude that you want a Spartan kick in the chest. If you don't think this way, you're a liar, first of all. You just don't say it out loud. You're like, well, oh, maybe you shouldn't either, Pastor Kerry, but you're laughing. It's fine. On your way home today, and your spouse says that thing again, and you're just like, <laughs> don't laugh, dude. Stop it. Don't laugh. Don't. Shh. When you, ladies, when, when he takes the trash out, and he's supposed to do it anyways, you're like, Arsenio Hall, that dude, like, nobody? Wow, that's a young crowd. <laughs> like, just, I just wonder what is waiting under the soil, ready to blossom into something beautiful, and all it needs is the special treatment of honor in your life. Can I pray for us? God, we just want to be a people of honor. We want to be a people who honor up, honor out, and honor all around because we see the value that you see in people. Not because we're supposed to, but because we love you, Father. Let it be a part of who we are in every interaction and in every relationship that we're in. In Jesus' name. Head still bowed, eyes still closed. Some of you in this room the linchpin that you're missing, the piece that is missing is actually beginning the journey with Jesus. Jesus showed honor to you by in the midst of your darkest moments and your poorest choices, he willingly chose to die on the cross for your sins and for mine. And there is a new life and a new season, a new chapter waiting, but it's on the other side of a yes. It doesn't happen through osmosis. It doesn't happen through church membership. It happens in a holy moment when you recognize that you are in need of a savior. And there are some of you in this room who've never begun the journey and today is your day. On our 12th anniversary, it will be the beginning of a new day and new season for you. If you're in this room and you've never begun that journey, in a moment I'm gonna pray a prayer. And right, right where you're at, I wanna challenge you to pray this same prayer with me. And some of you in the room have been running from God. You've prayed a prayer like this, but it's time to come running back and begin again for the first time 
in a long time. If you're in either of those categories, you need to begin today for the first time or again for the first time in a long time. Make this prayer your own. Just say, dear God, I know that you love me, that you've given me purpose, but I am not perfect. Would you forgive me? And now just make this statement your own. Just say, Jesus, I give you my life. In Jesus' name. Head still bowed, eyes still closed, nobody looking around. If you're here and you prayed that prayer with me, man, it, welcome to the family. It's the greatest decision you've ever made, but I would love to be in the journey. And in a moment, I'm gonna count to three and right where you're seated with nobody looking around, when I get to three, would you just put your hand up and put it back down? You're saying, Pastor Kerry, I prayed that prayer. I'm starting that journey today. If that's you, on the count of three, lift your hands. Ready? One, two, three. Put your hands up. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. I see your hands. You can put them down. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, God. We just thank you that you have done something brand new in this moment, in this space. God, we look to you as the author and the perfecter of our faith. God, today above all, we honor you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And God, we pray today that you would help us to walk and live a life showing honor to those that are leading us, those that are our peers, and those that we are leading. We give you honor and glory in this place. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, let's give a hand clap for the men and women who... What a message and what a moment. God is on the move and I'm believing that he met you right where you are today. If you just prayed that prayer, please let us know. We wanna get a Bible in your hands and make sure that you know you don't have to do life alone. Follow the prompts on the screen so we can help you get connected to your next steps. And if you call the Movement Church home, I wanna remind you to continue to be faithful with returning the tide and bringing the offering. You can give online right now by following the prompts on the screen. And for those of you who are local to Orange County, California, we'd love to see you in person on a Sunday at 10 a.m. at Laguna Hills High School. For those that are far away but are looking for an in-person church, email us at info at the ocmovement.com and we will do our best to help you in your search. It's been an honor to have you online with us today. We'll see you next week, Movement Church.